In the early 1900s, fear grips America. Fear of the dreaded crippling disease polio. It strikes down children everywhere. When it strikes the future president, Franklin Roosevelt, he decides to strike back. He founds the March of Dimes to lead, direct, and unify the fight against polio. For 17 years, March of Dimes researchers fight polio in the face of adversity, defeat, and the seeming impossibility of the challenge. And then in 1955, through dedication and perseverance, a miracle was finally achieved. The vaccine for polio was found. All I could do was ask about my son. Is he okay? And the only thing people kept telling me was he was holding on. He's, he's, he's a fighter. When he was born, he was one pound, 1.5 ounces. When I finally laid eyes upon him, I couldn't even see him between all the tubes and the gauze and the bandages. That's how small he was. He was in the NICU unit for four months, and that was the longest four months of my life. The March of Dimes is leading the fight to save babies from premature birth. Tragically, over 500,000 babies are born too soon every year. That's over 12% of all American children. Many will suffer long-term consequences, and thousands will die. Today, in the spirit of our fight against polio, the March of Dimes provides funding to researchers around the world who patiently dedicate themselves in the search for the answers that one day will bring a cure to premature birth and put an end to the suffering. The March of Dimes supports the very best scientists who are dedicated, who are brilliant, uh, who are having results in their labs. The March of Dimes takes a very serious process to select those scientists so that they are the very best doing work in labs across the country. My research group formed in 1990. They've been basically working with me for the past 16 years. We've been toiling on this topic for a very long time. It's tough to commit to a cause and, and, and doggedly pursue it. I think that for those with a more scientific uh, bent, they're used to frustration. They're used to experiments that don't work. We've been through this before. Um, and, and our perseverance, our collective perseverance, uh, eventually led to victory. So you have to be persistent, you have to be analytical, you have to be strategic, but things don't always work out, so you can't just give up. When I talk to people about research, a lot of people don't really know what research is, and it's, it's you just asking a, a simple question, for example, what initiates birth or what initiates labor, and digging deeper and deeper and deeper into discovering how this occurs. So it's really starting with like one essential, important question and finding out how a process works. I think that, that our researchers are um, probably part of their DNA is um, to not get discouraged. It is hard work. Most people I know work through the weekends, they work long hours, but it's also very satisfying. The joy of discovery. When we make an observation that no one else has made, you know, you can be there at three o'clock in the morning and be writing up the, the results and, and just be so excited and fresh and full of energy. It is really, I think, one of the great joys of being human. When you're the first to find something big, then it, it's really, it's incredible. It's a feeling you can't really, um, you, you can't, it's hard to relate to other people, but it's, it's really exciting. I mean, you can't ask people to work harder than, than these folks work. Um, and I think it accounts for some of the productivity, particularly over the last couple of years. Um, people are just driven to get the job done. I always get um, that clear look in the eye that this is important work that we're doing and we're going to keep doing it until we conquer this problem. With prematurity, you're dealing with a very complex disorder with multiple explanations, um, with multiple genetic predispositions, um, and it isn't caused by a virus like polio. But ultimately, um, we will make progress 
um, and we will dramatically reduce the occurrence of, of premature delivery and it's going to occur in my lifetime. I love the ability to think that one day you may have this large impact on, on so many women. We have every confidence that one day these dedicated scientists will in fact find the answer to these most difficult questions. Our organization and our focus and the goodness of our cause brings out the best in people and it brings out the best people. With the March of Dimes I feel safe and secure knowing that there is hope. I don't, I don't have to be scared for me to get pregnant again. That through their research I can be optimistic about the experience. I can go through it not saying, oh, I'm going to have a six-month pregnancy. I'm going to have a nine-month pregnancy. My baby's going to be healthy. I believe that the March of Dimes will be a leader in solving these problems for our nation's future. FDR understood the future. He could see that the future was where we really needed to set our sights. So my grandfather's um, spirit and insight and leadership will always be the legacy of the March of Dimes. We will always be thinking about the future. <laughs>